Welcome to the second episode of our Unbound series, everyone. This episode, we'll be finishing up our character creation and our world creation with Grant Howitt and Chris Taylor. But before we get to the episode, we have a few announcements, as usual. As usual. Uh, first up, if you missed last Friday's episode of Cape and Blade, the Chimera campaign run by my design partner, Ammer, on the Utopia channel, you missed some really great role playing by their players. Uh, they are a couple sessions in, and we already saw some really fun Chimera moves triggered. Um, I was very excited to see that. Um, you can check them out at capeandblade.chimera.games. Then turn your Twitch channels over to my personal channel this coming Friday, November 13th, for the very first session of my A Tale of Twinkle and Awe campaign, where we are blending magical girl, superhero, and fantasy genres all together to tell a solar punk story where our heroes are a, uh, this is uh, delightful, a shape-shifting alien from another world uh, who came through a portal uh, and was time dilated for about 20 some odd years uh, in the portal, uh, who only experienced it as seconds. Um, an orphan whose focus uh, grants them uh, extraordinarily powers, uh, but the focus uh, when it was activated may have killed their parents on accident. Oops. Or disappeared them. Yeah, uh, we don't know. Uh, all we know is that the the portal in uh, in question uh, kind of did it, and nobody knows. So that's that's spicy. Uh, we also have a feathered dinosaur person um, that is uh, ready to protect anyone. Uh, a multi talented superstar diva who moonlights as a superhero, and a warrior trained from birth to wield an incredible power. Um, so it's uh, it's it's really fun. I'm really excited for this, uh, and I would love it if you would join me at 7:30 p.m. Central Time uh, at Twitch.Chimera.Games. Secondly, uh, we are on the lookout for an artist for a new shirt idea or, or two. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple thoughts on the direction that we want to go. We've been like hemming and hawing about this for forever and we're finally yeah. like we should do this but we um we are a little overwhelmed by the number of choices yeah. <laughs> so every time i try and find an artist i'm like oh there's there's so many good ones and i don't know where to start mm -hmm. and then i have analysis paralysis when i shut down yep. um we would love to commission a fan of the show if your style kind of fits what we are picturing this is a paid thing we do want to actually like commission somebody mm -hmm. Uh, feel free to reach out to us on Twitter or on our website at contact.charactercreationcast.com or you can email us charactercreationcast at gmail.com mm -hmm. and we, we will be in touch. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, the design for the t-shirt will go up on the One Shot Network uh, store on TeePublic, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so it should be, uh, should be a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, finally, we hope you are enjoying the latest series. Uh, it feels uh, kind of surreal, actually, that this is the second to last series of 2020. Um, oh, yeah. It's, it's been like 10 years uh, since we started 2020, but here we yeah, are. 2020 is like an eternal Tuesday. It really is. <laughs> so I would describe this year. It's, it's always Tuesday. Mm hmm yeah, so we're, we're actually setting up to record the next series, uh, but if you know of any fun, unique games coming out in January to March uh, time frame, uh, or any individuals that we can feature on the show, uh, just uh, definitely uh, point them our way. Uh, we're especially looking for diverse voices uh, and people from marginalized communities uh, to, to feature. Yeah. Um, so definitely let them know, um, and we'd be happy to have a conversation with them uh, to see if they're interested. That should be everything for our announcements. We'll be back again after the show with our call to action. But in the meantime, let's get on to our character and world creation. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. Episode of Character Creation Cast. 
Chris was creating a brawler. Amelia was creating a striker. And I was creating a protector. While Grant was overseeing everything and regretting his decision not to create a fun character with us in this great CRT punk world that we are creating together. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. I, I will say as well, um, one of the things about characters you're making in Unbound, everyone can fight, everyone's competent, everyone can handle themselves. Um, so you can be as daft and as wacky uh, as, as you like. I'd encourage you to try and keep it vaguely sensible, and then you can get wacky that as we build. Um, but you can, at the very least, fight in whatever terms we determine fighting it. So, like, m- maybe you have a gang who fights for you of people who are who are your friends who you've rescued from crime. You know mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Um, but keep that in mind as we go through. So, yes, vandalism, property damage, and aiding and abetting. So, Chris, you are a brawler. Yep. I want to be a brawler, with, uh, a brawler, vandal, like and arsonist. Odds. With I like those odds. So what do you use to take out your adversaries? A crowbar and a spray can. Mm, any particular colour? No, no, depends what I'm painting. Okay. Um, how do you avoid damage? Uh, by being fairly fleet of foot. I'm, mm. I'm seeing them as being fairly dodgy as a character. Can I put forward as well? Stems. Yes, you can. You avoid oh. pain rather than damage. <laughs> how do you avoid damage? I'm wired. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, um, Dex and Fastidious? Yes, yeah. yeah, he's just on Dex. Okay, it's just cool. he's, he's constantly like... like I'm, I'm imagining him as an actual career criminal. Mm. Not as a particularly like heroic character. And, and, and the vandalism is what he does for fun to relax. Yeah, yeah like he does... Okay, like, cool. like the way he earns a living is petty jobs. Mm, like okay. if you need a shop turned over, somebody threatened, mm-hmm. he'll do that. A, a muscle yeah. for other people, yeah. that sort of but thing. But okay. his passion is art. And he's terrible at it. Mm. Oh, there we go. But, That's the stuff. But his paintings are very big. Mm. Mm. Like it's scale rather than talent he's operating off. Quantity. And he'll just like, he's the sort of person like walking through one of the engine rooms. Doesn't know what it does, but he'll just drop a rock in the cogs and the wires mm. just because it breaks something. Nice. Okay. That should be a very easy character to create motivations for. As exactly. <laughs> Chris, a beautiful thing. Is here. <laughs> uh, cool. And where did you learn to fight like this? Uh, from Alfie. From oh man, Alfie taught you. I think I think nice. I, I think I was abandoned uh, as a child <laughs> in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, so God. for a while I was raised uh, by Alfie. Yeah. So like, I'm the I'm, I'm the only human bar staff there has ever been. Oh wow. There. Yeah. And, like, okay, only for a while. Been. I was climbing my feet. Now I, you know, run a protection racket. Uh, Is Alfie the one person who you won't um, screw over, the one person you won't steal from? Mainly because he can feel it when you steal. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Literally like trying to steal your father's fingers. Like, they're going to know. Unexpected item in pocket. (laughs) Okay, cool. I like that. I've got got a pretty solid concept of who he is. Um, Ryan. All right. Protector. Yes. So your proficiencies are defense and strike or shoot. Oh, strike or shoot. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to go with, uh, str- uh, okay. Um, and those are kind of open to interpretation, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, so strike means damage something in the area you're in and shoot means damage something in anything up two areas away. Oh, okay. Um, your strikes can be, um, can be guns and your shoots can be you sending forward eight dogs. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go with. Absolutely fine. I'm gonna go with uh, strike. Okay. Yeah, that works. Uh, Tell tell us a little bit about your about your concept. Okay, so um, I think I'm gonna lean into my nonsense (laughs) a bit. Yeah. Um, So uh, this character is a classical magical girl uh, who Mm -hmm. is a normal person. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, has the ability to, uh, transform into a magical sky pirate. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, right, right, right. I just, I felt a, I felt a seismic tectonic shift 
as the campaign. It's over here. It's, no, it's over here now. <laughs> no, it's moved. This is an it's, anime now. It's not where we were <laughs> two Chris, minutes ago. Chris's character just became the Bishonen love interest. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Chris's character got a lot more handsome. Oh, but still, oh, but still, definitely go. like like covered in plasters and tussled oh, hair. Yeah, yeah, like, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's like scrappy, yeah. certainly not clean cut no, no, no. at all. Grease I mean, it makes somewhere. my choice to have a sword feel a little bit better, at least. Absolutely, oh, yeah. yeah, great. <laughs> okay, so you can turn into a magical girl. I li- I, I'd like to I'd like to have like just just like one or two senses, Ryan, w- real quick. Why? Sorry, how? <laughs> there we are. No, why? I know why. How? <laughs> <laughs> how, okay, so how does uh, how does this character turn into a magical girl sky pirate? Mm. Um, there is um, like a an extraordinarily rare substance that every now and then gets uh, obtained from the toxic goo down below, mm-hmm. which uh, causes uh, like a, a almost magical uh, rapid Piratism. transformation type thing. Right, that right, you can okay. you can unlock. But it affects or lock. your outfit too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. nonsense, right? I love right. it. Um, totally. <laughs> um, and yeah, and basically you can you can control it to unlock or lock at will. Maybe, uh, not all the time. Maybe it's not a hundred percent. Can I can I try and add something to that potentially? Oh please! So like I imagine it in my head as like coming in a in one of those gas injector syringes. Like, like an air hose. Yeah, right? like you, you press it and it's like it's like um a, a hallucinogen that's actually real. Like everybody's Whoa. seeing it and that's what you that like that's, that's this, you're you're just like projecting your dream self over yourself and becoming that person. Hmm. So, so so like it wouldn't show up on camera. No, it could show up on camera, like it's a real thing. Okay, like yeah. it's yeah, okay, yeah. Like this is this uh, is a if, magic liquid. If you find a Leviathan that's dreaming you can siphon off its dreams, and so you're like you're, you're injecting whale nightmares, <laughs> and it turns you into <laughs> your best self, into your wow. into your best self, and you transform into. I was a, really wondering how we're gonna get there, but we got there. Right, and <laughs> I am proud of us. That's, that's, that's the magic of Unbound. Oh. Um. So, um, what do you use to take out your adversaries? Um. So, what do I take out? Uh, use to take out my adversaries? Um. I have. It can't, it can't be friendship. It has to be a weapon. No, I know. Um, gosh, what's a? It's what's, a big stick named friendship. <laughs> <laughs> it's a baseball well, bat thing, named it could friendship. Be, um, okay, because because um, Unbound works uh, in that it's got separate rules for dramatic and combat scenes. Mm-hmm. If you want something which only happens as part of your transformation, fine. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you want, say, like a pet. That, that, that yeah, I want. I want it to be. I have to be transformed to be effective in combat. Mm-hmm. And I want it to be like um pirate apparel based. So I could I could throw my my hat like a like a frisbee or uh like my my poofy scarf can <laughs> unravel and like a chain uh hit people and stuff like that. Yes. That is that is wonderful. That is great. I feel I feel almost like this. Like this story is too grimy, too, too grimy for your beautiful character. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd like to actually. I'd, I'd like to say someone. I'd like. To, I'd like to sort of see if I can bring in the scales because it seems like we've got quite personal character. I, I don't know. Maybe like the scope of the character, the scale of the characters is smaller than I was imagining. I was imagining mm-hmm. you as like sort of leaders in some way, but I'm interested in having it like maybe rather than stealing the entirety of New Providence, it's part of it. So like you've got enough to break off and then. It's- Set up your own it's city. It's the district that Alfie yeah. is per- has permeated yeah. through. It's like, it's not the yeah, whole city, think- it's just whichever bits he's got his wires and cogs in. Because I think, like, like we're trying to save our neighbourhood by getting it off the city to a, to somewhere yeah, else. Like, physically breaking it apart from the main island. Mm. I think uh, that sounds pretty cool and dramatic, yeah. yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah cool, okay. That, 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 that gives me kind of more of an understanding of the scale, I think. Okay, so you use um, pirate gags, say how your adversaries. Mm-hmm. How do you avoid damage? Um, I think, let's see, how do I avoid damage? 
I will say as well, yeah. it can just be that stuff doesn't hurt you that much. Yeah. In the, in, in the a thing which would knock out several of Chris's teeth yep. and knock him down, it's like, oh! Yeah, it's uh, like, the, like, like the enemy simply doesn't hit you that way. Exactly. It's like the the illusion that's around me that's an actual physical you know, illusion uh, has a, that, that bit of uh, padding to mm. it. Oh, I should, one thing I just realized, um, your, uh, the recover action lets you uh, draw stamina from your character deck to protect yourself against further damage. And when you recover, that's you believing real hard. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, you love to see it. You love to see it. <laughs> so happy. Right. Uh, and then finally, um, oh no, sorry, two more questions. How do you help your allies? What's your, what, what's, what's your buff? What's your boost? Okay, what's my boost for my allies? Um... It has to be like um, you know the power of words. Um, I bolster, I bolster their their like inner spirit, inner fight of uh, through through my uh, elaborate speeches, mm-hmm. uh, which has like kind of like a, a, a slight mystical effect to it, mm. right? Uh, so mm. it's not just me talking words; it's me talking words, and it it, it literally does something yeah. to help you can see the heart glow that yeah sort of there's like a metaphysical aspect to it and but you have you... to talk like a pirate when you do that. <laughs> of course absolutely <laughs> why did you learn to fight like this how did like because like you're not yeah where did i learn to fight like this um yeah are you self-trained did you, do you have is there like a magical gold dojo, dojo? no i th- dojo? i think this is a, a unique thing um not, maybe even to the world but especially to this island Oh man, I'm gonna put in another magical girl just so you know. There has to be. Right? <laughs> yeah, there's gonna, there's gonna like one of the villains is gonna be a magical girl. Yeah, while you're here. Exactly. So I think I'm the only one right now. Was it was it was it dreams where you learned to fight like this? I want to say it was um, something that Elfie had found. Okay. Um, and I had helped maybe the right person at the right time uh, as myself, and mm. got into like deep into Elfie's nonsense and um for some reason this called to me but it didn't call to anybody else mm-hmm. and then i figured okay Elfie, can can this seems important can i examine it see what's going on with it and then mm-hmm. uh learned you, from that you huffed it you poured it into a plastic bag <laughs> took a <laughs> Sure. Yeah, and then he turned into a magical pirate. That's a, that's a better um, story than um, Alfie chemical testing on kids. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> What's the power you're choosing? You've got five to pick from. Oh, boy. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Combat Medic, Guardian Angel. That sounds interesting. Um, on your feet. Yeah, uh, on your feet gives you um, constant low level healing. Yeah. Um, and uh, combat medic gives you big um, single action healing. Okay. And then Marta lets you um, get stabbed. But it's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great stabbing. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. I like, uh, we stand together probably. F- mm, that feels quite magical. It does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it does, but the name of it is great. I know, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basically, it um, it means that you you generate a separate stamina track, which everyone can access from as long as they're in the same area as you. Oh, yeah, yeah. correct. So we have a shared nice. we have a shared hit point pool in the middle of the table because of that. Yeah, I yeah. like it. Yeah, lovely. Okay, brilliant. Uh, and then finally, um, Amelia, what are you playing? Striker. Um, I'm doing the striker. Okay, <laughs> tell us about you. Um, you have a sword. I do have a sword. Yeah, I want a katana. I just, oh, I'm nice. gonna be. I just, right, I want sure. a katana. Why not? I love it. <laughs> um, because I, I mean, I want to just like run in, murder things, and run back out. Mm-hmm. That's what the striker That's what does. I be able to do mm-hmm. exactly. Is so, it a katana that works on robots? Yeah, it's got to be okay. CRT based, right? <laughs> What's that? Oh What's that um, it's so heavy. That game, uh, no more heroes, where he's got that kind of like lightsaber. Yeah, it's got the fluorescent. Yeah, it looks like a fluorescent up. tube. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ugh. Gross. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, like. I mean, it, we, oh, it could okay, be a laser like, katana. Why that not? Would, that would look pretty cool if, if you're like charging up a fluorescent tube, like in the dark of a ship. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, it, you're and right. It, and it's like okay. it's, it's 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 enough to go through robots. Yeah. I mean. 
Did you yeah, but I'm the, also picturing it's like I mean, with this level of technology, it's like what an incandescent bulb, right? Yeah, like, but also it looks like an incandescent bulb, but also it cuts up robots. Okay. Um, All right. Like, did did you build it yourself? Are you are you a whiz kid, or like, do you have someone who builds this stuff for you? Did you steal it? Ooh. I mean, I feel like I have to have stolen it. I don't think that I could make this you myself. Know, I, I kind of like the idea. I kind of like having a tech character and like like someone who's competent at technology, like to come up and so like we can have scenes like that rather than rather than Chris who's going to break it. Uh, and That's Ryan, true. Who's going and to Ryan teach is just going to magic at it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay, sure, sure. I have built this weird incandescent bulb katana. Oh, <gasps> bulb katana! Nice. Just like a series of like valves that. down a pole. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, and like and like and like it's 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 all held in with glass, and then when you turn it on, the glass like shatters, but the light the light hangs there. Oh, that's oh, so the, good. The glass yes. like floats around it, like orbits. Like that's oh, part of the blade. There you go. Yeah, that's the stuff. turn it on. Oh. Turn, turn it off, and the glass just snaps back into place. Like yeah, this yes. seems to work. Yes, <gasps> yes. I, I think all uh, the glass like falls to the floor. They have to replace the tube. <laughs> <laughs> You'll reload it. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. That's that's not backpack full of tubes. Um, I, I, I think you've got some sort of backpack. Right? Anyway, yes. So you you have yes. you have a cool uh, you have a cool fluorescent katana. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, man, uh, what power are you going for? Um, I want to go with um momentum. I think momentum. So at the end of your turn, gain temporary stamina equal to the number of wounds you inflicted that <laughs> turn. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. That works. That's a, that's a way of giving you sort of tanky stuff, like a little bit of tank. It's, it, it means you'll get hurt less. Yes. Certainly. Um, so what, how do you avoid damage? Um, I mean, I think it's it's just like quickness. Like, mm-hmm. go in, do what you need to do, run back out. Like, it's not, it's by not staying there very long. Mm-hmm. You're, you're already gone. Right. I, I, imagine like, I imagine like stamina damage for you would be you running away. And then, mm-hmm. like, it hits cover near you, and there's, like, shrapnel going off. But right. It's yep. luck rather than meat. Exactly. Brilliant. Okay. Lots, of, lots of strategic dodging. Mm. And where did you learn to fight like this? Um, uh, let's say uh, watching old, terrible movies. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. 100%. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, all like Star Wars was outlawed in this world. Mm-hmm. Uh, but was but what was not outlawed was a series of 19, 1970s exploitation Star Wars ripoffs. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> like really badly put together and like and like they they were so culturally important that like all the films have someone fighting with a big laser sword which aren't real. No one actually uses laser swords. They use guns. But I like but what if they did use yeah. laser swords? Oh, and it's and there's, and there's kind of a seventies vibe. Yeah, yeah. The, whole, the whole sort of like like martial arts films as well. I'm imagining yes. your your, your oh. room is just like stacks of televisions that are all on different channels, just mm-hmm. with all these old all, all these old like martial arts films on and things like that. Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's the stuff. I like that. That's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so we've got a criminal artist. More criminal than artist. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a an inventor and uh, and and and, and a, an obsessive with um, the twenty seventy films of um, sorry the twenty seventies the films that were shot in the twenty seventies um, mm-hmm. uh, of of the the uh, the uh, martial arts film resurgence uh, and a magical girl. Mm-hmm. Whose magical girl powers run off drugs harvested from dreaming magical whales and becomes a pirate. Mm-hmm. I, I also, I just, I, I'm not. I love the idea that this this became an anime when Ryan's character arrived, mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. like right now this is an anime. And also, like in this in the back of my head, I've kind of got what's actually going on, not through Ryan's character's <laughs> like mad hallucinogen haze. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's this grimy but, thing where people are losing teeth, and when somebody gets punched mm. to Ryan's view, like they just slide backwards in a cloud of dust. Yeah, yeah. Like what what Ryan's character sees is completely <laughs> different. And like, so, sorry, and what we describe is 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 not actually true, but we're describing a fun anime. Mm-hmm. I think that 
like for the for the rest of us, the world is like this dark and gritty mm. thing. And then mm. Ryan sees in like lots of bright colors and pastels. <laughs> like <laughs> it's just totally I mean, different that's, that's for really you. Nice. We, yeah, we, yeah, we've got we've got a magical drug addict, but we're not going to look at it in any way. We're not going to examine the tragedy. There's going to be no arc. <laughs> no. Let's not look at the horrors of addiction here. Let's look at the nice side of drugs. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> right. so, what, so, so now we've got all of, all of our characters sorted out, we're going to do foundations, and we need a core foundation for the group, which is, so this is kind of like a skill. This is something which will help you in dramatic scenes, and this is something which you all share. I'm thinking, like, the name of the bar regulars in that it's Mm. descriptive of the sort of people that go to that bar. Like everybody's a bit dodgy. They're all. And so that's covering like streetwise. Streetwise, breaking and entering, knowing people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not, not necessarily like, Oh, we're, we're going to do a full wall. No. Yeah. It's just, it, it's, it's scrappy rather than Mm. military talent. Yeah. uh, Alfie's regulars. Alfie's regulars. Or maybe Alfie's Irregulars. Alfie's Irregulars is even better. It's got a nice <laughs> name to it. Um, Alfie's Irregulars. What trait am I going to go? Uh, and then I'm going to just come back up here and just check what the next step on the, on the character creation bit is. Traits? Yes, it's traits. Um, so turn... So, Go ahead and trace. So traits are the uh, the sort of uh, the flair you have on top of your character. I'll read through what traits we have here uh, for the for the benefit of the listener. There is aura. You manipulate the area around you with magic or charisma. Companion. So you have a big thing or a trusted ally who fights alongside you. Captain who leads others into battle. A dirty fighter who does whatever it takes to win. Fire, which is fire. Mighty, which is a big weapon or physical or tremendous physical power. Rage, which we described as you can access a mental state of uncompromising fury, <laughs> which I like. Shadows, the powers of darkness and misdirection. Spirit, you draw strength from the souls of those who have, souls of those who have fallen before you. Transformation, you have a terrifying second form, and they are natural. You've tapped into something aberrant and unsettling. Now, Ryan, I would recommend against transformation because that happens whenever a fight occurs. Oh, interesting. Um, so, like, your transformation for you happens before you get into combat. Mm-hmm. This transform lets you, it gives you something which you can flip back and forth between. Mm. It comes with negatives. Okay. So, take a think about what you're interested in. Oh, I should have made a character. Should have done. This is the thing that always <laughs> happens. Like, oh, I've got- I gave you the option. <laughs> yeah, you did. It's okay. It's okay. I'm having fun. I've got mine. What you got? I want to take rage. Hmm. Okay. And specifically, I want to take reckless. You you take risks. The others are too smart to even consider. <laughs> this is just one of my favourite descriptions. So that lets me use my health to hopefully get a better attack. Hmm. Yes, that's that, that suits me, and it, it has like I can feel you almost. Let me put this. Almost being a charismatic thief. But not getting it not right. Not getting it right, but also being too much of like like a thrill seeker in a sort of, mm. I reckon I can make it between those two roofs. You don't need to. We're it's just like, going the other way. Yeah, yeah, like, No, I can make that jump. And I like, can make it. And like, like, there's a way that a swashbuckler would do it and make it seem like chill. Yeah. Or required, but you've just huffed a load of paint. Yeah, and now I'm trying to jump over roofs. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Um, now there's, uh, so each trait comes with uh, a choice of questions. Um, so Chris, I'm going to ask you, who's most scared of you? Um, I'm going to say that there is, uh, a small, but fairly violent gang that operates in the area that we operate in. Mm -hmm. And one of the bits of vandalization that I did was to drop one of those CRTs, one of the big wanted posters that had my face on it at the time. It was to just mm-hmm. drop it, just so it smashed on the floor. It went through the ceiling of their hideout, and I claimed it was an assassination attempt. I like the idea that they're like um, uh, rat-themed, like vent-themed, mm. scrappy, um, lots of crawling, lots of um, bursting out from walls and grabbing people. Yeah, like that. Uh, like protection rackets. They're scared of me, but also they very much want me dead. Yeah. Okay. I like that. 
Um, they they have a leader whose name you've not bothered to learn. <laughs> yes, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then for Reckless, what's the most trouble you've ever been in, aside from now? Yes. Um, immediately after that, I was um, chased across the rooftops by the police. And mm-hmm. it got to the point, you know, like, you know, like when you've got one person running away from the police, that's not, that's not a lot of problems. But then they get in a mm-hmm. car and then they start causing car accidents Okay. And then they, they keep yeah. on running and the helicopters are out and it costs more Throwing and good more money after and that. more money to try and catch this right, person. Yeah. This just got to be the most ridiculous, expensive chase across all of New Providence, like just smashing through nice districts. Mm. Um, and they did eventually catch me. Um, and that was the most trouble I've ever been in. Okay. So, like, so have you, so you've been sprung from jail? Yes. This, this, this is not my first time in prison. Sorry, sorry, but like, but like, you've been the three of you were sprung mm. from jail recently before this happened, and now you're on the run rather than yes. This is the most trouble I've been in previous to right now, as you said. Gotcha. Okay, I understand. That. Brilliant. Um, so yes, I, I I love the idea of this nice of, of, of like I like the idea. There's nice district yeah. as well. Just not in the eyes. <laughs> <That's so pleasing. laughs> um, okay, uh, Ryan or Amelia, any ideas? I'm thinking shadows, mm-hmm. even shadows. though I have a light up. Well, that works. Oh, I can definitely see that. Because well, I mean, well, you make shadows, right? Oh, okay, and um, which uh, which ability? I'm I'm thinking ambush mm. makes the most sense. Yeah, I mean, as you do, as you turn the light off, right? So uh, I like the idea of being like crouched somewhere like on the corner of a rooftop, mm. and then all of a sudden you turn on your light up sword and like jump down and. Oh, this is stab anime. someone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Here's anime. the thing: I have zero familiarity with anime. No, you've, I'm, no, I'm you've, doing my best. You, you just now, though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, okay, now, now we are going to need giant robots. So the robots we've got are normal sized, and also someone's. <laughs> it's going to have to be a transfer student that causes problems at their new school. <laughs> that that's is, up that, to you. That's for the that core species. anime plot. Okay. Okay. Uh, so ambush. Okay, I like that. So um, answer this question. Why do you fear the light? Uh, because it, it's more dangerous. They can see me, right? Mm-hmm. That's obvious. So, like, there's there's, there's, there's there's a desire not to be seen by anyone. Well, they can't put your face on a wanted poster if they never see you. True. True. Okay. Um, and for ambush, what's the most interesting thing you've seen whilst hiding? Uh, hmm. I kind of want... I think maybe the most interesting thing you've seen whilst hiding was the magical girl transformation. And now maybe you could have one. Oh. And your character art, could you be, could, could you try, and, not, not a magical girl, but like a kung fu artist? Yes. Through this dream drug. Oh. <gasps> or is that too high concept? Oh. I don't know. I feel like more than one magical girl might be too much. Oh, that would be the culmination of the campaign, I figure, is everyone becomes right. a magical girl. <laughs> The same mm. bloated <laughs> magical girl, like the end of Akira. I think that it has something to do with these robots. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, okay. I think there's some key to like how they're programmed or how they work that I have seen that nobody else has. Are they? Are they like? Are the robots? It's how they're wound or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, kinda, I want them to be like a dark seeker or something, though, you know? Like, I don't want the robots to yeah. actually be people because I want you to go and kill robots, and that's fun. Right, totally. Um, but, like, maybe, like, the AIs are from people who've been, like, who, like who've, who've been siphoned off or, like, like the minds have been stolen or there's there's orphan bones in them. Mm. Oh, mm-hmm. um... Mm-hmm. Cause like I want, I want something like co- like rather than just sort of an advantage. I want like a. I a think secret. I think there's some kind of like like energy source that comes from people that they have like the people that have been put in prison. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of have their like energy stolen oh, that's perfect. and put into these robots. So that's how they keep all of the people subdued too. Okay. Right. So yeah, you've got you've got the kind of the Leviathan blood is what powers cities, but you can get a knockoff version with people. Right. Oh, like, God, it's not great, but it'll do in a pinch. You 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 inject Leviathan like a, blood. A right tiny off. bit of the Leviathan blood, and then that. Oh, and then and then and some people reject. And it, some obviously. people reject it, but some people then that like becomes what they start generating. Oh, 
um, Brian, can we quickly redesign your character real quick? <laughs> so she was injected with Leviathan blood and then this happened. Oh, I like that. Rather than, yeah. rather than having constant drug use. Yes, yes, yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, and, and that lets you have the capacity to just drink like a gallon of Leviathan blood in the final season. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, okay, yeah, I like that. That's fun. Um, and now we're, we're back into magical girl territory because the siphoning of energy from uh, human beings is 100% under that wheelhouse. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. And so like you've, you've discovered this, uh, Amelia, Amelia's discovered this dark secret behind the universe. <laughs> behind the, well, I guess it is the universe. This is all we know of the universe. Yeah. Um, yep. Cool, okay. Uh, Ryan, yes. what are you going for? Uh, aura. Aura, okay. Yeah, I was, I was toying with the idea of going with the unnatural. I think that'll be pretty cool. It would be pretty cool, but it'd be pretty cool. I know. Uh, I I just can't because <laughs> I could have like tentacles like writhing under my skin or, mm-hmm. or other yeah. other weirdness. You have just, yeah, to you, in you. Look, to you it looks great. I mean, fair. It's like the tentacles have bows on and stuff. I will say as well, uh, the advanced version of the parasitic. In addition, the first time you die, you do not die. Ooh. Um, you simply pupate, forming a horrendous cocoon. And at the end of the scene, a new, better, taller you steps out from a hole in your distended chest cavity. Oh, that's horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it's really gross. You can see the groundwork laid for heart there. Yeah. yeah a little bit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, so, look, okay, like, the unnatural is very much sort of taking us into a different kind of anime, mm-hmm. but it still lets you do Magical Girl, and I quite like the idea of you being this sort of happy, smiley, sort of, like, pretty, happy-go-lucky girl who does this Magical Girl transformation, and it's just nightmare. <laughs> it's like this roiling pillar of hate. Uh-huh. With a pirate hat on. I, I, but I don't know. I do kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, sorry, with a pirate hat. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's definitely, like, uh, you know... Very old school, like flashy pirate. Okay, in which case then maybe not. <laughs> let's, let's, let's move so away from the. You need to stop pushing your dreaming. your dream magical I'm girl sorry, onto I'm somebody sorry. else's. I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. So, uh, what sort of aura are you thinking? I was thinking aura of the bulwark. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. So it's me uh, inflict half damage from shoot actions that enter our area, um, okay, as that's long cool. as I stay within that area. I like the idea that you're parrying them with a cutlass. That and my oh, your scarf. Hat. Your hat and scarf, yes. Yeah, I can just, my scarf's whipping around and blocking yes. bullets and stuff that are coming in. Oh, it's, and it's like, it's, it's, it's sort of like, it's it's spiraling around, like in a globe shape around everyone. Mm-hmm. Like and, those, and, uh, and, uh, the, the, the ribbon cover. gymnastics. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There's Pretty much like oh, that. that. There's a specific oh. word for that, and yes. I can't remember what it is. Oh, my, it's, it's rhythmic it's like gymnastics. gymnastics. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, brilliant. Um... But a pirate, pirate. Yeah. A pirate. It's, got, it's got a skull in, on it. That's how in you know. The weird fifties space future. Yeah. Pirate, yeah. We'll, we'll just call it pirate gymnastics. <laughs> what pirate gymnastics. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan, who's scared of what you can do? Oh gosh. Um, who is? Who is it? <laughs> is it? Is it your mum or your older sister? Um, I'm gonna say who is scared. Yeah, it's it's got to be um like a close family member, uh, a twin. Mm-hmm. Twin, oh. twin sister. Oh, a twin. Oh. That was the only thing this game was Gotta missing. Have a twin. We, should, we should put that in the rules. <laughs> Must have twins. <laughs> Must have a twin. Yeah, if, if, if one character does not have a twin, the game ends. <laughs> you lose. <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. I like that. Um, and she never got the magical girl powers. Or oh, did she? But she never got the magical girl powers. Right. <laughs> uh, and like, and like she, she got a job in the corporation. Yeah. <gasps> well, what, if it's, what if it is uh, genetic, too? That mm-hmm. that this interaction oh, with the yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you have a twin. Yeah, That's no way it's not. Don't be ridiculous. Yeah, totally sorry, twin. Brian. I, I, I've just found a place to put all of my weird dream in the world. Looks like somebody just did take horrible. the parasitic. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. And her eyes rolling back in her head. I've unlocked the true power of the Viven blood. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's brilliant. Um, uh, the, for the question uh, for Aura of the Bulwark is you protected someone not too long ago and earned an unexpected ally. Who? Ooh. It's got to be um, somebody. Oh, it's got to be like either one of the handlers 
or or somebody mm-hmm. somebody in the corporation itself that's like was fairly loyal to the corporation. Nice. Mm-hmm. And and maybe maybe I protected them when things went south at one point. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think that they would be an ally. I thought they were always going to be an enemy and uh by protecting them showed them that you know we can be we can have their back more than the corporation can mm. yeah okay i like that that seems like something we, we could bring it in the second act um i like they do that they are a like like a robot maintenance person yeah I think- rather than like someone who sends them into battle or what have you there's someone who repairs them and talks to them and sort of mm-hmm. understands more behind them and that gives us an interesting end yeah i think that works sort of human face okay. in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and their their name is Chris. I want I want a name like the Serene Group. Uh, masculine or feminine? Ryan, so uh, your, let's, your yeah, let's go with feminine. <sighs> the Serena Group. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, is she related to uh, the warden or the the foreman? Foreman. Yeah, might as well. Actually. Catherine Brocious. Catherine Brocious. <laughs> Um, Catherine Brocious. Uh, I like to think that she used to be married to Grooch. Possibly. Mm. Brocious. God, you good at that, Chris. So, um, we've got we've got we've got a bit of a broader understanding about our characters now. There's some sort of insidious uh, uh, corporate plot to inject prisoners with the fire and blood to, to siphon power from them, and you're uh, you're slap bang in the middle of it. But never mind about that. You're gonna you're gonna de- detonate the pub you basically live in and ride it to a new part of the world and attached to a different boat or maybe a floaty oil rig or a space elevator what have you Mm -hmm. that's all great yeah now what we're going to do we're going to create foundations so the foundations are kind of like uh skills or um backgrounds or proficiencies the things which the things which make you you other than your role and your trait and that sort of thing okay so um we've already come we've already come up with one uh, which is Alfie's Irregulars mm-hmm. for, for your overall group. What we're going to do is we're each going to come up with uh, one for our own character, and then the group comes up with a second one for each character. Uh, so you lose a little bit of control over who you are and where you're from. Um, these do, You don't have to explain these right away. They don't have to make a lot of sense. Um like if you want to have like if you want to have some weird non sequitur or hint at something that's more important coming later on, put it in one of these and then we can explore it through play. Okay. Okay, so I'd like to do a, a fairly obvious one, but mm-hmm. I'd like to get caught breaking something big and obvious. These are foundations, not fights. Oh yes. But that's a, yeah. Sorry, I got confused as what we're doing. But no, I mean the the Hang on yeah. to that. No, That's it's a really solid later. idea. I like that. Foundations. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, the artist thing works, I think. Be a foundation. Oh, yeah. Like rough and tumble artist. Yeah, okay. I like rough that. Rough and tumble artist. That's a great foundation. Um, yeah, so it's it's the fact that, like, he's constantly covered in bandages and plasters. Mm-hmm. And, like, he's fairly tough. So it'll cover mm-hmm. skills like endurance and climbing especially um but also and art not. and creation of things as well as his actual like class skills being breaking stuff mm. i've got an idea for, for your other one heart of bronze which is like a heart of gold but two down <laughs> it's a lot cheaper <laughs> A lot cheaper, yeah. Don't try as hard. But I like I, I like the fact that your character's like almost struggling with his good nature. Yeah, okay. Because and like and like the magical girl is really sort of providing a nice sort of counterpoint mm. to that, I think. No, that works for me. So, yeah. so Heart of Bronze and Rough and Tumble Artiste. Lovely. Um Amelia. Uh I feel like I want one of them to be that's not how it worked in the movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, which is just like the first several times I try things. Um, it should just happen because I saw it happen, uh, and it doesn't. So I think it doesn't go like that. Like, so th- this should be a strength mm-hmm. of some kind. But okay. I, but like, we can take, take that just, idea. I, yeah, I mean, I think it like things work, but they're just a little bit messier. Mm. Um, like it's not as like. Okay, yeah, I like that. How, um, something like... Uh, how about, like, 
rather than that's not how it worked in movie. That's how it worked in films. Yeah. So okay. like right. yeah. you can repair right. a television by hitting the top of it. Yes. Some, but you know what I mean? Like like so it's dumb. only gonna yeah. last ten minutes yeah. and then it's going to explode. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like all you need is a hairpin and you can unlock a door. Mm-hmm. You don't understand how locks work. You don't know what's inside one necessarily. But if you put a little hairpin yeah, in, yeah, I think wiggle it's things it. that are like ultimately. It's not a skill. It's not repeatable. Yeah, it's like one time mm-hmm. thing. But like, yeah, it, it, it works. It's temporary. <laughs> it's it's a bad solution, but it does. Yeah, okay, work. that's nice. Yeah, I like it. I think I I want something for the kung fu for the second one. Maybe maybe not kung fu because it's it is, it is sword fighting. What are you thinking for the mm-hmm. second one? Yeah. I'm thinking like uh, a code of honor type thing, mm-hmm. because that's like that's a big part of martial arts movies. Bulb sheet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, it's this. I can't think of a of a pithy way of wording it. But like, people trust you because they know you live by a code. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. They might not know what the code is, but like. It's like not understanding a samurai's code, but going, yeah, they're, they're meant to be all right, aren't they? They're good. You know what I mean? Like respectable. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, respectable. <sighs> yeah, okay, I like that. Like warrior's, warrior's code. Yeah. <laughs> you can make up what the code is at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Warrior's yes. code, despite the fact that you your main fighting style is jumping off a balcony and hitting someone with a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I like that. Ryan? Um, when it comes to clothing, physics doesn't apply. <laughs> so are we talking boob socks, or are we talking, like, <laughs> your dress is always perfect despite the Yeah, mar- it's, the it's, like, it's like always perfect or blowing in the wind dramatically if needed, um, or, like, I can... Even when there's no wind. Or, like, my, my scarf can be used as, like, a, like, like a solid chain, or, like, mm-hmm. maybe I can even take one of my pieces of clothing and, like, like flick of the wrist turning into a sword okay yes yeah, you, can, like you, you can like climb your scarf you can use like a mm-hmm. grappling hook and things like yeah. that yeah yeah okay yeah magical girls clothing magical girls clothing department magical uh, unlimited wardrobe budget <laughs> yes <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, for, like for the other one I'm thinking um, Leviathan field ships captain ships captain mm. Pirates know how to pilot. Mm. Mm. That's some other. Mate, like, I, I like the fact that we can sort of explore some other things about Leviathan blood injections. Mm. How are these ships, Captain? You're not entirely sure. <laughs> it's Leviathan blood. <laughs> the answer to everything is Leviathan blood. Oh, that, that'd be interesting if I have like a connection to that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that, that you're the driver as well is quite nice. Mm. Like yeah. That. But you just know, like, because of that, you can pilot anything from like golf carts up to cities. I like that. <laughs> Fantastic. Next up, we're going to do Fates. So as we said earlier, Fates are like scenes we'd like to see. Mm-hmm. Each player creates a fate for their character and the group creates a fate for each character. Now, Chris, you want to get caught stealing something yeah, so big. Yes, you're caught stealing something, not stealing something big, breaking something big. Yeah. So yeah, something okay. big and obvious, like like a statue of the CEO. I've got to say, like, as, as a GM, just a series of delicious jewel tips. <laughs> you are welcome. You're giving me here. Yeah. <laughs> or, or like the, the biggest CRT screen in the city. Yeah. I, like, that I've, is constant propaganda. Whatever, like our Times yeah, Square. I painted my <laughs> face over it, which unfortunately means <laughs> yes. that on every wanted poster that flashes up, it's my face. <laughs> 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 and I sort of just... The good news is you're a bad artist, yeah, nobody actually so nobody actually knows. But just sort of standing back <laughs> and, and admiring my work, and just going, ah, as the handcuffs get put on immediately, <laughs> like, oh, dear. <laughs> That's lovely. Um, I think I would like to see your Heart of Gold challenged. I'd like, I'd like, to, I'd like to see your, um, like, the fact that you're super cool, the fact that you're this sort of devil-may-care vandal mm. artist come into question. Um... Sudden moral quandary. I want to have someone from your family show up. Okay. Like, your older brother comes, he's like, come on. Come home, we have lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, because, like, I was abandoned in the in the bar. Oh, sorry, no, 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 no. That, that's fantastic. No, I like that they come back. Yeah. Yeah. They come back and, like, look, it, 
We've been watching you for a while, and honestly, you've been mucking about a lot. Now, mm-hmm. you've you've got a corporate job waiting for you. You need to come back. Uh yeah, I like the idea that you're you're, you're like you've you've got that corporate yeah. blood in you or something. Oh. You're, you've, you've inherited like, a position. The idea I have that Alfie's given me is not only counterfeit, uh, but and tagged, mm. but like no, this is mm. your ID, and it's like it's got so it's like that like this all happened like five mm. years ago. Like, like, like your your true identity was revealed to you, and you're like, no, I don't yeah, want to do that. I'm not having all that. And <laughs> and so, like, and, and so your your uh, your mother arrives, just <laughs> carried on a palanquin, <laughs> just grabs me by the <laughs> ear and drags me into a court. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. that's delightful. Yeah, okay, cool. So yes, mm-hmm. uh, um, the, the fate mummy shows up. Mummy arrives. <laughs> oh, and I, I get to play a powerful mm-hmm. Porsche woman, which is my favourite thing to do in exactly. games. Exactly. <laughs> a series of delicious jewels. Amelia, what's your fate? I mean, I want to have a one-on-one duel to the death. Absolutely. Absolutely. That sounds great. That's amazing. I'm yeah. thinking, I'm thinking on a rooftop. Probably. Yeah. Somewhere iconic. Yeah, somewhere yeah. precarious, for or sure. On, on, on the cable that connects the upper city to the lower city. Uh, yeah, like some kind of like I don't know, moving platforms. Or something, something massively dangerous. Yeah, no guardrails. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah, death rails. Well, this is the future. There's no guardrails at all. No, right, no right. There is no, there is yeah, no OSHA. So a series of lawsuits were born to place against guardrails. <laughs> all that material. Yeah, it's just safer not to have them. Yep. Yeah. And what's, uh, and what's what the fate we give you? I'm. I. I'm thinking cool. something about the fact that you don't like the light. And you don't like mm. like t- taking that as a concept. Like you start becoming celebrity. Ooh! Oh, you start drawing attention. Yeah, like um, in a sort of get me pictures for Spider Man sort of way. Like you right. get this underground thing, and yeah. and the papers start picking up, and you go, actually, this is a this is a fantastic story, and it's like like people trying to get your picture all the time, mm-hmm. which is a terrible thing for you. <laughs> I'd like to have. I'd like to have like one sexy journalist mm-hmm. who's like who's 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 tracking you down and 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 trying to dis- and trying to discover the uh, the story of the fluorescent tube killer. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible name. Yeah, they're not good journalists. <laughs> well, you didn't pick it. No. Um. All right. Cool. That's lovely. I like that. Um. Now, Ryan, what's your what's your fate? Um. I think I want uh my my fate to be um. I want to use my power when I'm not transformed um, and have it be surprising. Okay. So, like, your That's power nice. just yeah, like kicks that. off. Yeah, like, uh, maybe a... Power power. Yeah, so, like, maybe my, my normal clothes, like, become a weapon or a, a shield or something mm. like that. Which causes problems to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, you're, you're past- <laughs> Brilliant. Um... I like that. That's fun. And then um, I've got two words for you, and it's evil twin. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Right. I mean, I was going to say, I mean, it's, there's it's no way be. that's yeah. not it. Yeah. And I'd, I'd like to imagine that your evil twin makes her presence known rather than turns up and does something. Like, there's just, like, there's something shimmering in the distance as your evil twin coming yes. up, <laughs> hovering like a blimp. Yeah. Rising I tentacles like and all. Mm, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so my next job is so my job is to come up with the factions and the twists. I'm going to skip the twists because that's primarily a gameplay mechanic. Um, but I'm going to go for the two factions that will help or hinder the player characters. Uh, we've got Alfie is one of the factions, I think, and the the Gestalt entity known as Alfie. I, I like the idea that Alfie has arms in many streets. Absolutely. Like yeah. the, the, just his arm will just run, go along a runner and pull open a door that should be locked. I like to imagine, like, like he looks by holding up his hand, like a, like <laughs> yeah, a, like a puppet. Yeah, um, and the and the the other faction is uh, Providence Inc., but primarily uh, Lysarin Grooch, mm-hmm. the uh, the the local arm of enforcers. Now, what we're going to do? Final. Oh, sorry. Two more things. First off, we're going to get scars. So draw a card and tell me what card you get. And then from that, you uh, you generate scars. And so scars, I think, like, no one's led a perfect life, especially the characters in this game. So you're going to draw the card and tell me what you get, and then i tell you what that relates to from a page, which I don't know what it is. Got uh, Princess Serenity holding the Silver Millennium Crystal. 
Um, sorry, uh, look that up with your charts. <laughs> <laughs> so is that this not that not what you wanted? Sorry, right. no, that's fine. I mean, like, has it got has it got like a like a suit? Yeah, it's uh, six of hearts. Brilliant hearts. So hearts is fear, humiliation, social loss, trauma, embarrassment, and curses. So if this were a real game, you'd write on the card uh, some like s- some sort of weakness you 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 have acquired throughout your career. Chris, what did you get? Six of diamonds. Loss of an important item, sensory loss, memory loss, or skill loss. Your favourite. <laughs> um, I'm thinking he's actually vaguely hard of hearing um, okay. from years of living in and around engine rooms and mm. always having a pair of headphones on with far too mm. loud music. So, like, yeah, okay. he's, he can still hear people talking, but he's not very good at stealth. Well, like- or hiding, uh, yeah, and and like, and or, or like, like, like being, he gets crushed yeah. up on a lot. Yeah, he gets surprised a lot. Okay, Amelia, what about you? I got nine of diamonds. So nine of diamonds uh, again. Loss of an important item, sensory loss, memory loss, or skill loss. Should I pick a different one? No, it's fine. Um, okay. What um what 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 did you lose? Mm. The recipe for a like garden. I think. There is a wakazashi to match my katana somewhere. Yes, somebody else has <sighs> your has gone. your your paired Just weapon. Gone. Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. Just gonna note that down. Probably whoever I end up mm. dueling. Um. Oh no, no, they're they're they're, they're going to be the focus of the third campaign. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, I didn't define mine. Uh, my mm. my social loss or whatever uh, is probably <laughs> my sister's love. Yes. <gasps> Ouch. Oh, we flash back to your seventh Christmas. <laughs> Heartbreaking. What if he Very gets a bike, so. the other gets the pirate ship? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Excommunicated. And the final thing we need to do is, is pick a name. Oh, yeah. We need to pick oh. out a name for your characters, oh. which is always the hard bit. Oh. Um, so the, the, the names we have in this game so far are Providence Incorporated, Alfie, Leviathans, Lysarin Groach, Catherine Brocious, and The Rust. So that's kind of giving us kind of quite a dank, chewy vibe to the names. I'm thinking cool. Graf. G-R-A-F-F. Graf. Mmm. Yeah, mm. just Graf. Yeah, okay. And like and like and like your surname well, your surname's Providence. Yes. Oh yeah, my surname's Providence. But you don't no, I don't want to use that. Gra- Graf Providence. That's got a nice mm. ring to it. Amelia, do, do do you go by the um, by the vigilante name you wished that you were you were referred to as? <laughs> oh, what's a good what is a good vigilante name for someone with a with a light bulb so like, sword? So like is light in Latin. Luminance is good. Luminance, Luminance. a superhero. Mm-hmm. But that's like, like that. that's your first name. Like that's that, that's that was on yeah. your birth certificate. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a coincidence. L- Luminance Edge. Luminance Edge. Oh gosh, that's such a terrible <laughs> so good nice. name. <laughs> that's it. Oh goodness. No. No, your first name is Sailor. Right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you would, you you, would think you, so. Are, it, it, are you Sailor the Viathan? It almost kind of feels like it should be, but um, there's a boat. What's, a, what's another word for sky? Um, Firmament. Fundament. Yeah, fun. Fundament. Fundament? I don't know which way around it is. I, either Fundament yes. or Fundament. Don't, don't pick it up. Don't do that. Uh, uh, clouds. There's the different layers of, the different layers of the sky as well. So there's like the... I mean, you could just be like ozone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can do like Azonia. heaven. About, uh, you can do... Like uh, Captain Strata? Yes. She's captain. She goes by captain. She goes okay. by captain. Uh, yeah, when she's transformed. Yeah. Ah, oh, we go. Yeah. Okay. Captain Strata and it, Orbit it, Starshine. It, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's the stuff. Chris, I'm going to have you on every episode. Just yeah, to I'll, name I'll just drop in for a little me. bit. Name some stuff and be out. It'll be fine. <laughs> that is Chris's other job. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you're you're suggesting Orbit Sunshine for my character's actual persona name? Yeah, like like, because, y- like like the person they are. Birth certificate. Yes, 
So I love how Starshine is also my twin's surname, mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. is also evil, and mm-hmm. that makes it wonderful. I love it. Orbit's not Star. Her name. Her name is. Her, phone name, her, her first name. name is Violence. Oh. <laughs> I, I was going to go for Tenebris. Tenebris Starshine. That's better. But I just like the Violence Starshine. Violence Starshine. <laughs> Club oh, Starshine. It's very good. All right, we're done. That's the character. Oh, we did it. We've done it. Wow. That's wow. The what happened so, again? Uh, I want to play this game. I, know. I really <laughs> want to explore the world of Tenebris Starshine. <laughs> I mean, all of that out of Sky Prison Pirate Corporation. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's, a, it's a fun game. It's a fun way of making a, a, a setting. It's really cool. Phenomenal. Yeah, it's really interesting. Oh, my goodness. That was so good. Oh, yeah. it's nice because it's, it's led by, it. by by the questions and it walks you through the steps. But it, yeah. it, the whole point yeah. is basically just like, as with all of our games, we, we, we put up and describe them as putting a shopping cart at the top of a hill and pushing it and just kind of seeing what happens. Mm. And it just mm-hmm. builds this momentum like a snowball and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and it's always fun to make a game in on that, mm-hmm. always. Yeah, this was good. Absolutely. This, this was, was really good. good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, thank you so much for joining us for our Unbound character creation thank episodes. Grant, do you want to remind everybody where they can find you online? You can find me at GS Howitt, so that's H O W I T T, on Twitter uh, or at rrdgames.com. And if you'd like to buy a copy of Unbound, go to rrdgames.com <laughs> and there'll be a link somewhere. It will be obvious. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be yeah. on the front page. We'll put it there. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Chris, how about yourself? Uh, I'm on Twitter at the Madigan. I think I do not go on Twitter a lot. I just thank you, you. thank you. Um, <laughs> just go to the website. That's the easiest way to contact me. Honestly, <laughs> just 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 ask ask me yeah. a question if it's important. It'll filter ask Chris. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you to both of you for joining us. Thank you to everyone for listening, and please join us next week for our discussion block. Character creation is done for our Unbound series. Mm-hmm. We hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I This went in some very weird directions, <laughs> and um, I don't know how we managed to squeeze magical girls in there. Somehow we did. It yeah. maybe worked, I think. Why well, I mean, magical girls blended Leave it with... To Ryan. And we're like C- CRT yeah. uh, CRT lightsabers. Punk. Yes, luminance <laughs> edge. I believe. Oh gosh, it's so good. Oh gosh, I I would like to hire Chris to just do all of our naming. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Oh my goodness. Uh, um, I hope that you will join us for our discussion episode where we dive more into the game as well as get into our fanfic portion of our episode. Mm-hmm. Always a favorite. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, But before we head out for this episode, we just wanted to say a few things and give you a few reminders. Uh, First off, a very, very big thank you to everyone in the United States uh, who actually went out and voted last week uh, or earlier. Uh, If our extremely late message came out in time to help just one person remember to vote, um, I think that was worthwhile. I think so. Um, Hey, we have a result at the time of recording this, or at least a very projected result. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, folks, we did it. (laughs) Um, I'm still like processing. Mm -hmm. Um, Still, still getting there. But um, we really have a long road ahead of us still. We need to keep this momentum going. I know that we are all exhausted after the last few years. <laughs> um, there's, you know, two years till we have another midterm election. It's perpetual election season here in the U.S. It, it really is. Um, but we need to treat every election as important. This, you know, we treated this one like it was a huge deal, but really all of these elections leading up to it matter. Mm-hmm. Um, find out when your local governments are having elections. You know, I pointed out last time, like it affects everything like school boards and, you know, whether your kids go back to school. Mm-hmm. So go to your local government websites, make sure you're registered to vote, um, register to do mail in voting. If you thought that was more convenient or it's a thing that you're able to do in your uh, in your state. 
call your representatives after this election and let them know what sorts of issues are important to you and what kinds of things you want to see, because uh, this is not done. You mm-hmm. can't just show up every four years. I mean, you can, but um, <laughs> please don't just show yeah. up every four years. Uh, there's there's a lot that still needs to be done. Yeah, there there definitely is a lot we can do for sure. Um, I know the last four years has been extremely rough for a lot of folks, uh, but um, uh, of course, me being me, there there is a silver lining <laughs> to it. Um, it. It feels like there there was like this fiery passion that was lit under a lot of people's feet uh, to actually pay attention to politics. Yeah, and it feels like we had a realization as a nation of like how big of a deal some of this stuff is. Yeah. Uh, um, at, at once 2016 came and passed and and everything that happened since then, um, it, it was a it was a wake up call. Um, yeah. And I, I think if uh if we stay educated on the issues as as a people, and if we if we vote in every election, especially the local ones, mm-hmm. um, and and get educated about who is running for local offices, because uh, ev- everything kind of works its way up from there. Uh, just keep at it every election, uh, especially every two years. Uh, yeah, they they are so very important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think that now we've all had like a little bit of a breath of fresh air at this point. Mm-hmm. I feel like a little bit rejuvenated and a little less beaten down. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully that's that gives you a little boost that you need to keep going. Absolutely. Um, for those of you not in the U.S., <laughs> um, <laughs> thank, thank you for putting up with us talking about all of this. Mm-hmm. Um, our, you know... It, we don't know what your election cycles are like. I know that in other places, they're not this bananas. They don't go on for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have an election. We have six months of yeah. like a transition of power and then we start again. Yep. Um, but also, you know, go vote whenever you can. The world feels like it's changing. It's, um, you know, it's going in weird directions. Um mm-hmm. It's an eternal Tuesday. I don't know when your elections are held, but ours are on Tuesdays. Uh-huh. So um, you have the power to make things change um, and to really affect those things. So please, please do whatever you can in your own country, too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now, uh, having said all of that, uh, we do still have a couple of reminders. So thank you for sticking with us. Uh, first of all, uh, please join me this Friday at 7.30 p.m. Central Time uh, to catch the very first session of my brand new campaign using the Chimera RPG system. Um, it's called The Tale of Twinkle and Awe. And we're playing a collaboratively built solar punk world that is blending magical girls, superheroes, and fantasy genres together. You can find us at twitch.chimera.games every other Friday. Finally, we are still out of reviews. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, you know, before I say that, um, also a reminder that we are going to com- uh, looking to commission some art. Oh, yes. um, so if you are an artist, please reach out. Um, mm-hmm. You can contact us through our website, through Twitter or by email. Mm-hmm. Um, but also we are still out of reviews. Mm-hmm. So if you could do us a huge favor and send in another review through Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Stitcher, any other number of podcast services, I think Mm -hmm. I said last time, you can write it on a post-it note and send us a picture. Obviously, that doesn't (laughs) help our ratings as much as some of the other ways, but you know what? We will still read it. We'll read Um, it. This year's it's been rough um and all of your reviews have brought a nice little bit of joy to both of us we love reading them out on the air um and like i said it does help us in the rankings and help new listeners find us Mm -hmm. absolutely uh for now stay tuned next week uh for the exciting conclusion to our unbound series and until then take care of yourselves uh take care of each other and keep making those amazing people have a good week everyone have a good week bye Bye.
Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like The Broadswords. The Broadswords is an all-woman D&D podcast focused on drama, roleplay, and subverting stereotypes. Join the broads as they unravel the mystery of Snowy Rashomon, a land ruled by witches and steeped in superstition. Berserkers reign and spirits roam the frozen wastes. Yelaris, Kila, Mipri all have their own reasons for journeying north, but they soon find they have something in common. They are pawns in a divine plot.